back here with the beginning of the 31st, or 31st, the 31 a.m. turn, turn three of six of the Fayid Pass scenario here for Kasserin. And wouldn't you know it, that little attack that happened last turn that the Allies, the daring raid down here to City Buzid, well, that turns out that actually put the two main German stacks here, or our Axis stacks, out of supply. They just cannot trace uh, back to this road here because of the, um, and wouldn't you also know it, the uh, French garrison over here in the Fayed Pass actually stayed in supply because there are no um, Axis units now with City Bouzid empty. There actually is a traceable line of supply from the uh, the western part of the map down over here. Come up, zoop, zoop. So it actually stays in supply. These two uh, units go out of supply. A complete uh, turning of the tables as we would have thought uh, it was going to be for the Germans or the Axis forces. So yeah, really, uh, <laughs> I think the problem is, and I've been thinking about it uh, a little bit about my play here of not just Kasserin, but some of the other Von Boris games, uh, the Rhodes games in particular, I sort of wonder if I group too much in giant stacks and move around sort of with stacks of doom, to use a civilization term, right? You sort of move around, and uh, if you played Civ Four, that was a big thing, right? Move around these giant stacks of doom that just really couldn't be assaulted or beaten, and they would just take down cities or whatnot. And I've been kind of doing that here. I just have these giant sort of German stacks that, that can move around the table and, and destroy anything really pretty much grouped together, but the, at the same time, they keep all their forces together, and they're not able to really hold key locations uh, with nominal, you know, weak forces, but holding key areas. You know, originally, um, I believe this stack, I originally thought I would just keep them here. And if I would have done that, it would have kept this whole catastrophe from ever happening, right? Uh, but I was thinking, that's a little too conservative. I should have just expand out more because I want to attack. And I realize now that not only am I guilty of, say, grouping way too many of my units together in giant stacks, but as, for example, in this scenario, it's not really necessary for me as the German player to get that aggressive. I don't really need to keep pressing over here to the west. This is not a sudden death hex over there. It's really just where the units spawn out of and come out and attack me. What I really need to do is just focus on taking the Fayid Pass, and if I can, holding these two supplementary hexes, right? So I think I was guilty of maybe getting a little too aggressive, of pushing out a little too far, and two times it has bitten me um, in the ass. I'm gonna just say it, sorry, ass. It, it's what you have on your backside. And it's what snakes bite you if you're unfortunate. And the Allies did it to me twice uh, as the Axis player. Actually, I did it to myself, which is a strange way to say it, but it's true. As a German player, I definitely became overextended. As the Allied player, I made my German self pay for it. So, interesting turn of results. What does that mean? Well, it's the Axis phase now. We rolled for weather. It is clear weather. That means we're still going to be able to have good effect with our Air Force. We're going to decide we're going to do interdiction missions. Uh, there are some other things I'm going to show about reinforcements you need to think about, or if I want to do DRM modifiers, or if I want to have airstrikes. I really haven't been using airstrikes at all. I need to think about that. Sorry, there's no action on the camera, and I know that's really boring on YouTube not have any sort of movement on the camera and just talking. That's really boring. Anyway, um, things to think about. Uh, also, I have three turns left after this turn, so I have this activation and one, two, three. So I have four more activations for the Axis. So I need to start thinking, let's take the goal, right? Let's get our victory hex secured. Uh, also, I'm in emergency supply, so we need to get out of that as soon as possible as well. That means we're going to have to start probably have to double back here and focus on the old pass at Fayed here. Um, these units still are just holding out like they have in the beginning. We still have a strong point there. We got a nice minefield. We got five points of, of defense, but we have enough grouped here that I think I can get some good attacks on it and at least open that pass up. We're going to see if I can uh, sort of double back around here, come and attack that way. <clears throat> and also come around here and attack this way and just sort of surround it and be able to get like a concentric attack so that it can't really escape without taking losses or, you know, sort of that idea, right? And just pull back the Germans and, and wait for the inevitable, inevitable counterattack. Because not only do we have these units down here hiding on the mountain, which I've determined to be just uh, too difficult to assault, we're not going to come down here and try to mess with that. We're just going to try to open up this eastern uh, supply route. And if we can do that, then that's sort of going to render the um, stack down here its purpose sort of moot, really. It just, it'll lose a lot of its function if it can't draw these people off supply. So I'm going to try to reopen the supply line here. We also need to think about these reinforcements. The other members of the first armored we talked about earlier, they're going to come down here. And in case you didn't see that, just some really good stuff. Self-propelled artillery, like a 
a nice sort of reconstituted here, two companies put together, two former companies of recon put together, got nice armored infantry, a nice tank unit, and a headquarters. So some good, good stuff coming up here from the south. So maybe this time to pull back as the Germans and sort of wait it out and see if we can hold the pass or delay an attack of their units. It just it might have gotten a little too greedy, a little too big for what I should have been doing as the Germans. And I should have just been really, I had my eyes on too big a prize and I got a little greedy getting that nice attack last turn. So I think that's what we're gonna do as the Germans. We're just gonna kind of pull back, we're gonna start consolidating. I would like to think I could hold these extra hexes and maybe I still can. But honestly, I gotta, these stacks have to have to start focusing on, we have to open that pass this turn. So I will probably focus on doing that. And when I come back, we will see the results of that turn. Here we are in the midpoint of the 31 a.m. turn. The, um, you know, the Axis, they really found themselves in quite a pickle. That attack down here by the first armor to take that, that actually really, really hurt them because having their two main stacks be put in um, emergency supply uh, really put the, the onus upon the Axis to really reopen the supply lines, correct? You know, they can't really go out of supply because it's just, it's disastrous for them. They can't really sacrifice the movement and also the efficiency rating and uh, it also greatly dilutes their attacking power. The problem was, though, is that the Fayyid Pass is difficult to take, and the reason it is, even though I'm showing you the results here, you can kind of see that the Germans, or the Axis forces, did indeed take it. It was a dicey affair, but the reason it's tough to take is because it contained not only a minefield, which gave a plus one DRM uh, on the uh, combat roll itself, as well as on the combat roll, uh, coordination rules, minefields are very difficult uh, to overcome. Uh, also, we had a strong point, but not only that, we had mountain terrain, because there is a mountain uh, shaded hex there, so you have to use the worst terrain when you attack. That itself gives a plus two to your combat roll. Um, it also messes with your, um, oh man, I just made a little mess here, didn't I? It also messes with your, um, oh, I really did, it did kind of make a little mess here, but that's okay, actually. I can fix it pretty quickly. Basically, mountains are just no good for you. They just, incur both the penalty on your combat coordination roll because it's difficult to get the mountains, I guess, to do that. And then it also uh, in, puts a plus two roll on your DRM for attacking. So really the mountains are just difficult to break into to see what's going on. If you hold them, it's just difficult to uh, have them taken from you and such. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm just kind of rambling some restacking guys. Okay, there we go. There we go. That's better. All right, better. Long story short, lots and lots of modifiers. And if we look over here, we can see sort of the combat modifiers I calculated at the end. I did get the combat coordination roll. That was a pretty lucky one because my best rated unit, I believe, was a recon unit. It was a six ER rating. Uh, and that was difficult, but I rolled a five, did it. Came over here. Look at these. We got plus one because of a strong point, plus one because of mines, plus two because of mountain. It was a four. I had a minus one ER, uh, ER differential. So in this game, you can only have a plus three or minus three as the max DRM you are allowed. Um, in the road series, it does go to a plus five or minus five, but here it's a plus three. It was a three to one attack. It had to be assault because it was strong point. And if we take a look at the assault, um, you know, like there's the, the uh, CRT for the assault, right? It's not generous if you look at three to one. Like if you roll anything above a five, so 50% chance or more, you're taking losses or retreating. And because I had a plus three, that means I literally had a 20% chance of not taking a loss. Um, but now that I'm looking at that, I'm realizing how foolhardy I might have been. But I had to do something, right? You have to do it. So you have to be, you know, fortune favors the brave. That was kind of foolhardy now to realize that, oh man. But I got lucky. I rolled a one. There it is, the one. And because I rolled it, it let me plus three was a four, and that gave me a defender retreat. So um, unfortunately, pushing those units aside, as we can see here, didn't necessarily do me any favors because although it did kind of give me the fight pass X, which is what I need for victory, uh, I didn't really damage these uh, uh, French units. I wasn't able to get enough, uh, I didn't have enough units with enough uh, movement allowance to move around the back and block them from moving out here. That would have been nice. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention the whole reason this all went down, of course, I forgot to mention this, was because of very successful interdiction rules by the Allies, which is crazy. My Air Force came in 
And what happened was is that I essentially got one interdiction to go through, one error, one uh, plane did not pass its ER rating, and I totally boffed that roll for the Axis. The Allies had both theirs come through, and uh, they rolled exceptionally well. Actually, only one of their planes went through, but they rolled like a one. And so they were able to pick two units of the Axis to pin down. And they picked two armor units that were very key, that were over here. And uh, using my ability to trade one marker for two, I essentially put these guys out of the commission. I did those three there, and there's somebody else hiding, I believe, with a marker. Yeah, this guy. So I had this anti-air unit, take an out supply marker, this uh, uh, this uh, tank, and this other um, mechanized infantry, and then really that armored car, which kind of hurts. The armored car might have been able, I think it was going to be able to kind of come around the backside and pin, which is really the use of armored cars in all of the Vance's games. They really are just, and I mean, that's probably how they are used in real life, correct? You just sort of... Uh, use them to go deep into the rear or hold certain passes or just strategically cut off the enemy, things like that. So not being able to do that, the French push back, and now they have the ability on their turn to coming up to actually capture the Axis supply point. Uh, it doesn't really make it go away. It, it will still resume there if the uh, French move are eliminated, but um, <coughs> it is going to put my units that are an emergency supply, some of them at least, uh, definitely will go out of supply because I don't have really an open supply route that's easy to access if they're blocking it. I, I'll have to deal with that in a future turn. It's, it's going to be quite a concern. It's making me think the Axis may have just shot themselves in the foot by going a little too far, a little too early. The reason you see these kind of sort of divided stacks now is that using the Axis motorized movement phase where I can move my red box units up to half their MA, I was thinking, oh, I need to get some units back in supply if at all possible, and the southern route is technically still open, it's just blocked by zones of control uh, around here, right, because the units you know, on the mountain here. So technically this is a still in supply road. I have to just get five or seven hexes. If it's a rain turn, it has to be five, but seven is what it is in a clear. And I'm one, two, three, four, five away right now from that point with that stack, and this is actually the bulk of my armor. You can see here, yeah. And a headquarters unit, because I'm going to bring one out here. What I left in the Fayed Pass was sort of a, um, these are going to go away at the end of the turn. We have a sort of a recon unit. We have um, our motorized infantry and the headquarters. So not too much, but it can hold up against that French attack if the, unit, if the French unit gets feisty. And then I also reinforced with those sort of out-of-supply units, thanks to Allied Interdiction, they took the other victory hex that lets me get a, a better victory. They had a, went up here and held that. And then this unit sort of reinforcing here with the artillery I moved here, which was used earlier. And it really was helpful. And it's got some other stuff here, including that guy that's out of supply due to allied interdiction. And he might stay out of supply. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, so now the pass technically is, is in Axis hands, but it's not necessarily in very good, secure hands. But, you know, there it is. I pushed them out. That was a difficult. It was not necessarily a very easy, as we just saw, roll or guaranteed combat, very foolhardy, risky, but I pulled it off. So we needed those kind of moves right now for the Axis since we're, we're, being, in, we're being put in those kind of positions. Um, yeah, so the goal is hopefully we'll see what the Allies can cook up. I don't know if the Allies necessarily want to leave this Hex um, just to sort of keep these guys out of supply, uh, mainly because they're doing such a good job of, of, of uh, destroying the Axis supply lines. It is possible they may just send a unit down here to block that line off, which I just thought about would be totally devastating <laughs> and uh, essentially might uh, completely ruin uh, the scenario in terms of the Axis. It really would show how misplayed or how I really badly played the Axis forces there. We'll see. That's very much entirely possible. I just thought about that on camera. That means that's uh, kind of silly. I probably should have seen that earlier, but we will see what happens. When we come back, we will see the end of uh, the... Or actually, I'll probably think about what I'm going to do with the Allies, and then we'll talk about it. So I'll come back. All right, here is the uh, sort of I moved a lot of the allied units. I haven't attacked yet. This is the very end of the 31 a.m. turn. And the Germans are definitely going to be very hurting the Axis forces because of their overextension. And because they've been put into emergency supply, it's definitely, they're re, you know, they're definitely feeling the pain now. And the main reason is that not only is this first armor group now moved up the road here. I'll take my book off. Not only have they moved up the road from here, 
and become threatening there, right? But they were also, uh, you know, they're just additional forces. But these forces in the mountain, in the mountains here, they were cutting off all the supply, right? And were making it such a pain to put these guys in kind of pickle they're in now. You can see here they took out the armored car, they brought it down, it had just enough movement. They had to come out of the mountain through this trail hex and then kind of zoom around. So only this armored car could really come down here and do that. And it has now cut off the access supply here. And up here, this infantry is on the same thing. This unit could not move. There are restrictions in the rules. You can't willingly put a unit out of supply unless it is like a, any German unit can do that all the time. Uh, any non-motorized unit can and some other things so like this unit basically can't willingly put itself out of trace supply which it it actually um, currently is because these units are blocking the supply so it actually can't really move this one could so this one over here the infantry did take that because it can't actually leave so it's blocking that and uh, this is blocked so now the uh, access are effectively <laughs> um, going to be out of supply next turn it's going to be very 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 rough for them let's go ahead and refocus this down so not holding it so much And because of that, the allies have really taken advantage. Ooh, I should zoom in just to get rid of that zoom or that glare. So the allies have taken advantage. They, as we said before, they took that sort of armor car of the mountain here and brought it up. They don't no longer need to hold the mountain because the they've already achieved their effect, right? They're pushing the Axis units back. And plus the first armored reinforcements here kind of gives them breathing room, more forces to kind of move things around. Actually, it's the CCC of the first armored. I don't even know what that is. I Again, I don't, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I apologize. People that love the North African front, um, not knowing what the first armored CCC is versus the CCA, but there you go. The CCC have rolled in, probably not the Civilian Conservation Corps, but something a little bit more edgier. Uh, they've come in and uh, given the ability to kind of spread the Allies out, right? Now we're seeing the full force of the Allied counterattack. The Germans are definitely up there, the Axis powers, God, I keep saying that. The Axis powers are definitely gonna have to sort of come up with some sort of uh, stalwart defense. But, um, so my entire rambling point here is to say that the Allies can now really push back, and they have. Uh, putting here allows them to kind of sort of hold this unit in place. They've now taken these units that were in the mountain and now come up here to put pressure on the, so the victory hex that the uh, access forces are holding. Uh, those former uh, French forces that escaped, uh, they're coming back to wreck their revenge. And of course, the artillery support have held them back here because they have a three hex range. And there is our wonderful uh, useless anti-tank unit there, uh, just kind of kicking it, uh, allowing the stack actually to be able to use its own, um, to use its support values for defense if it's attacked. I would go into it, but we won't. Um, I did move the recon unit here because there is uh, there was an Axis um, artillery unit here, but because now I have this recon unit when I'm attacking this hex, it can no longer uh, support that hex with its own fire because it has a unit next to it. So that's kind of interesting. So basically I've started the combat here. Uh, I guess I can just kind of go through it right now. It is a 26 to seven attack. Right now the odds are when I have that sort of a CCA stack there you see there and the um, it's a combination of French and also a CCA unit that I actually rolled to release the one that was conditional release and I actually rolled to release it of course because the allies are getting some very very uh, advantageous rolls here so let's go ahead and run through the combat here I haven't really done one but let's go ahead and do it because uh, why not uh, the allies are just to be are on a roll maybe they can do it here I don't know it's it's a little risky to be pushing their luck here maybe they're doing the same thing the Germans did and getting a little overconfident but um, at the same time why not the allies are you know they can inflict some damage here push push these guys off the hex I think it's totally worth it I think and the allies think yeah we're two in one of the same mind I guess all right so let's see we're going to do artillery units. So we want to do artillery units. We've tied theirs up. We do want to have ours come in because we could actually get a, a better odds shift if we can. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. We have a, oh, right. They're all halved though. So this is a two. That's a one. That's a one. What do we need here? 7, 14, 29, 28. So we just really need like two more. Let's go ahead and just put them all in because if we boff it, then we, unless we just totally boff it, but it'll be, I don't think it'll happen. So we'll commit them all. If we get it all, we would have, let's see, two, three, four. If we don't, we'd get two, unless we totally boff it. We need a, what is that? Yeah, we just need a five. Oh, let's take a look at our modifiers. I should say that. 
This is an assault combat because it's in a mountain hex, so we can't do mobile. Uh, for artillery, we don't have that. Just we're gonna use command points. It's not mobile, and it's not woods. So we just gotta roll a five or less. There's no modifiers. We roll a three, so we get it all. So we're gonna have 30 to seven odds now. All right. And they go to fired. Actually, it's so weird in this game because you you turn them to fired. But then at the very end of this phase, they just go back to not being fired, so they can just fire again in defense. It's very interesting. I don't know. It's kind of like, why even have a fired side? But I guess it's just for an aid to help you remember. Which is totally fine, I think. Okay, so now we've upped our odds to 30 to 7. And that's pretty helpful. Actually, I should put it where we can see it, right? Okay, so it's a 37 odds right now, which is actually comes out to be four to one before we do any of those kind of like ships or whatnot. Okay, so we've done the artillery. They don't have any artillery to help them because I've pinned it down. They don't have any air force. We both don't. We've used them for interdiction, so none of us have uh, air forces to use. Uh, now we're gonna do a ground unit coordination attack. So we need to find out which unit I think is the best. Who has the best stuff? It was gonna be the recon unit, but I had it bend down the artillery. Oh boy. Ooh, that guy's brittle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these tanks. So it's a five value. So we start off with an ER value of five. Let's see, we're gonna make an ER check for the units. Let's see what the various modifiers can be for an ER check on this guy. It's not mobile. It's not a hill, it's a mountain though. So he gets plus two automatically. Oh boy, that's fun. So we have a plus two to the roll. It's not a wadi or mines. We don't have an escarpment. There's just one attack hex. So actually, we do get a nice little modifier of only having one attack hex. So we get a minus one there. So that comes out to a net uh, minus one. And I think I will use my armored units, um, the headquarters here. I think I will use its command point because this is when you honestly should be using it. So we'll go ahead and give ourselves another minus one there. And... Uh, you can see I do math really well, don't I? So that comes out to a zero. So that's nice. No modifiers on the combat coordination roll of a five. So we're going to roll it. And we're going to see. 50%. Come on, baby. Yes, we roll a two. Okay, so we keep our four to one odds. We don't get a two a column shift against us there. That's very, very helpful. Um, I believe there is an armored unit there. So we can't do a combined arms bonus. No. So there is an armored unit. We don't get a combined arms bonus shift. That's okay, though. Four to one assault, that's not terrible. I would actually like five to one, but four to one's fine. Okay, we have all that. Let's see what our die roll modifiers for the actual attack roll are gonna be. Is it in a strong point? No. Are they in a minefield? No. The hex field terrain, they are in a mountain. And that's definitely gonna give them a plus two on a DRM, which is rough. And actually, wait. Wait a minute, I might have totally goofed this. Hold on a second. Oh goodness, you know what I just realized? He's fine, he's fine. He has to be attacking through a road hex. Just realized that. Where was he at? He was over here, wasn't he? And Oh, that'd be uh, seven and, oh goodness, can you make it? And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, six, and seven, and eight. No, he may not be able to make it. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. That'd be seven and to get here. That would be eight, nine, he doesn't, ooh. It takes one to move out of a zone of control. Oh my goodness, he may not be able to do it because he has to attack through the, the hex here. Oh goodness, he's so close, and that's going to really change the odds, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to be 25 to 7. Oh, that's rough. That's rough, rough, rough. There's no way I could have gotten those odds any real better. Yeah, so that's... Oh, damn. Okay, so... I'm glad I caught that. That's one thing I've got to realize is that like with mountain hexes in this game, 
you really, if you have a motorized unit or red box, I think, it, or anti-tank, armor, or artillery, they have to go through a, a, a trail hex in order to be effective, and they also have to have their attack. Oh, goodness, they have to have their attack. I forgot. Oh, no, this is going to change everything. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna figure out that figure out what I did wrong there. I'm so glad we did this on camera. I might have totally goofed this. Okay. <laughs> well, this suddenly got a lot less great, but uh, it's okay. It became a two to one attack because I had some armor that was attacking through here on this uh, trail hex side into the mountain where they're located. So that became uh, half as effective. So now my odds are two to one on an assault, which is not great. I did take this tank and I did move it down here instead. I was able to do that and I figure in the motorized movement phase I can move it with somebody else or figure out what I want to do. Um, I can join a stack or something again. So we'll see, we'll see. Blah. That's okay though. I'm glad I caught that because that's actually one of those kind of game crushing things. The Germans actually might be able to hold out here now. That's just a two to one attack. Uh, we were doing the ER uh, DRMs last time I remember looking, right? And so we did have what? We had a five attacking. They're going to have their six, their little anti-air uh, there, their heavy anti-air the unit. So we're going to get a... <laughs> nice. We're going to get basically a plus one on that roll. We're going to get a plus two for the mountain. And I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, what, that's going to be the, all the die roll modifiers in the attack. It's going to be plus two for mountain. And plus one for the ER differentials. It's going to be actually a total of plus three. So again, very difficult roll, two to one. Going to have to really hope for low numbers here. I kind of wonder if this was really, now I'm like, oh, this is not a good attack. I didn't realize I was doing this so badly, but maybe I'll roll well. Hey, I rolled a two. That's actually pretty good. So two plus three is five on the two to one. That's attacker one, defender one, disrupted. All right, I'll take that. That's actually really great. And that was that an armor one too? Did I have to do that? Yeah, that was an armor. Armor attrition. So that means the first step loss has to come from an armor unit. I believe that's to go for both sides, right? I'm gonna look that up. Sorry, I normally don't do this, so I'm just trying to have like. Resolving combat. I try not to do this because it's just dead air. It's obviously not very fun to just have a bunch of dead air. Um, and I hate to turn it off again. It just makes a makes a lot. Oh goodness. So the rules here that are kind of like an older rule book. It's definitely harder to find things. Uh, you can kind of tell that some things are just. It's not very well. There's no index. It's very difficult to find an index. It would be very easy if I could just look that up right now. Let's see. Oh, shaded box. Here we go. If the attacking force contains one or more armor steps, they did. And it, and uh, one or more of the units Defender X has a red defense strength or Defender X contains mines. Okay, interesting. The first sub loss of any attacker must be an armor step regardless of the actual unit for the attack. So actually, it's not them. They have to lose an armor step. It's me because they attacked me, right? That makes more sense, right? So I have to lose an armor step. I wasn't going to... Well, that's actually fine. I was going to lose an armor step anyway because I had made them the lead unit. So there's my attacker one. I lost one. They also lost one, right? It was attacker one, defender one, D. That's what it was. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, this guy takes a loss. He's actually a one-step unit, so this unit goes away. Psh, sorry, heavy anti-air. He goes away, and this entire stack now gets labeled as disrupted, which means they're going to have to roll an ER check, or otherwise they're going to suffer very nasty uh, penalties on their ER and further. I think they actually are cumulative with some of the out-of-supply stuff. It's going to be very not good for them. So yeah, they're going to get a disrupted marker. Okay, so again, not really a great attack, but actually became very advantageous there for the Allies. That's actually pretty remarkable that it came out so well. Another one, that an ill-advised attack that actually really worked. Okay, so now I actually can do my motorized movement. Who do I really want to move? 
Probably this recon unit because it's just hanging out. It did its job. Um, I'm seeing a little bit better uses now. We can pin down artillery and then move the recon units out. That's actually pretty handy and very useful. Um, I'm not so worried about getting things caught up here. I'm just really worried about having units caught in the open. I'm not trying to outflank the axis here. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and pull this guy back. He has half his movement. He can pretty much go anywhere. Six and nine, right? That's three, yeah, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he can't take that. Oh, and this is probably, how big is this stack? Let's just count the stacking. I think it's a nine, I'm not sure. It's a three, four, five, six. Hmm. Guess what we're gonna do. Well, first off, because it's the end of combat, we know these guys are gonna flip back over, actually. All right. So this guy's actually going to go and one, and one, two, because of the zone of control. Actually, they may not even have one because of disruption. But it doesn't matter. They're so close. We don't really have to count. We know they're going to make it. And then both sides can flip over their artillery. Use. This guy used all three. Okay. All right. So that's actually pretty good for the allies. The allies are actually looking really strong right now. And I can turn these guys normal. This is... I was thinking I was going to take a break and come back and look at the board, and I, so I turned these guys diagonal to make myself know that I moved them. But now they're actually pretty good. Oh man, not looking good for the old, for the old Axis powers here. Okay, let's take a look at the overall situation because we just finished the turn. We'll do some reorganization, which means effectively that the Germans will get rid of that strong point in minefield. They're gone. Those, those go away. And that's helps helpful, but not necessarily because again, their supply is blocked in both ways. So both these units will go out of supply. In fact, almost every unit here will become out of supply if it's already marked so, or um, emergency supply. So. We'll just go ahead and flip that over. Well, I'll have to take a look. But I'm, yeah, I'm almost positive those guys are going to go out of supply. But when I come back, we'll take a look at that. Um, even though it's a little bit out of the turn sequence order. Oh, my little wrapper because I'm eating a little snacks down here. Let's go ahead and see what the weather's going to be for that 31 turn. It's just fun to see. It's going to be another clear turn. Wow, it's just been super clear weather. Good, good weather here for the old... Uh, for the old scenario. So again, we got their air forces ready to go. We'll see what's happening with them if they're doing interdiction. We might need to start thinking about DRMs because it's getting pretty nasty here for the uh, old Axis forces. And the Allies, they actually could use interdiction. It's very, it was so potent for them in this last turn, which is, I'm gonna have to remember to remove those markers. But yeah, that was very, very potent for them keeping these uh, Axis forces uh, further off kilter because of their devastating moves. Oh, just, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I think I really goofed here for the Axis and, and gave them a very, um, uh, it's gonna be difficult, but I don't know. They're still holding that mountain hex. I, I shouldn't I shouldn't talk yet. They're still holding the victory hexes. So when we come back, it will be onto the fourth turn, which just leaves three turns left for the uh, allies to retake these hexes and for the Germans to hold on for desperate life. And when we come back, more of Kasserine.